This is Scott Spears, and today we remember a legendary actor, Mickey Rooney, who sadly passed away Sunday at age 93. Joining us to remember this Hollywood icon is his co-star from It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, Marvin Kaplan. Marvin, how you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good to speak with you, uh, but not uh, a terribly happy occasion. No, no. Uh, Mickey Rooney was uh, an institution in our business. Uh, they, they should, I don't know about MGM, but they should have a building called the Rooney Building because he, he kept them in business for over 25 years. He, he and Judy Garland were the big uh, hits uh, on the contract list. It was a very prestigious contract list, uh, including Hepburn and Tracy and Gable and Lana Turner and so on, Elizabeth Taylor. Mickey worked with all of them, except maybe Hepburn. Uh, he worked with Frank Morgan. He worked with Wallace Beery. He, he worked with a lot with Judy Garland. Uh, uh, he, he worked with everybody in our business. Uh, he was directed by Clarence Brown. He had such an influence on me when I was a kid. When I saw um, the human comedy, Oh, I, I got a job as a Western Union kid because Mickey Rooney was a Western Union messenger. Uh, he, he was Andy Hardy for a long, long time. And that Andy Hardy series kept Metro in business. And um, Mickey Rooney was uh, uh, America's uh, young boy uh, and, and adolescent. Everybody thought uh, he was the image of the, the one, the best kind of thing in America, uh, as far as growing up was concerned. It was a very innocent time then. Marvin, being that you looked up to Andy Rooney, or Mickey Rooney, excuse me, as a role model, uh, when you got to work with him in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, what was that like? I never worked with him in Mad, Mad World. But our sequences weren't the same. But I did get to know him a little better when we did all these gigs for Mad Mad World on the 50th anniversary and so on. That was set up by Karen Kramer. Now, it's a shame to me that the Academy of, uh, the Motion Picture Academy never gave Mickey Rooney an honorary Oscar. He was a, 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 a piece of lightning in our business. When was the last time you saw him, Marvin? A couple of months ago. What what was his situation at that point? I'm, I'm not sure if he uh, if he uh, went to Sid Caesar's funeral or not. I'm not sure of that. I sat in the back row. Uh, but um, the situation had to do with Mad 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 World, and the, they had to have fire engines and all of that stuff, which I wouldn't get into because. No, I'm in the wheelchair. So, uh, and we talked a lot, little. Uh, he looked very frail to me. His daughter, uh, Charlene, told me that he, he wasn't doing well. Uh, and he, he wasn't doing well financially either. He was, uh, he was having some problems with uh, his ex-wives and so on. When you saw him that day, uh, Marvin, being that his daughter had said he wasn't doing well, when you got the news on Sunday that he had passed away, was it a shock? I didn't get the news on Sunday. I got the news on Monday. I, I, it was not a big shock, no, because he was, he, although he was, he's a trooper and would work in spite of all his pain and everything, he, did, he looked very frail. Uh, the last time I saw him. And, you know, uh, I mean, he, he was, uh, an ex he had more energy than anybody I ever knew. He was on a different uh, level. I mean, his metabolism was so fast and so, and so high at all times that you could only stay, uh, the first time I met him, uh, I, he, he was with an agent. We were both of the same agent, Ruth Webb from New York City. 
and uh, Ruthie was trying to get, um, she was packaging a um, comedy sitcom uh, series and based on a comic strip um, with Jigs and Maggie. They were going to use Mickey Rooney and Martha Ray. And uh, uh, Ruth left me in the office with Mickey Rooney. Well, after a half hour, he, he wore me out. His, his energy was so tremendous. He was so, he was always, uh, uh, always full out. I, I, the man never relaxed when he was a young man. And, and uh, he, he could do so many things. He could act, he, he could sing, he could write, he composed music. He, I, I never do if he directed or not, but I'm sure he could do that too. Um, and all his energy wears you out. Betty Garrett, who worked with him in um, Words and Music, and where she played Lawrence Hart's uh, girlfriend, uh, so she was with him, and she said he wore her out. Uh, he had that kind of energy. You couldn't stay with him too, too long, because he, he was too much. But... Uh, I, I, my energy is very low. I I, um, I have very slow metabolism, <laughs> so the two of us <laughs> couldn't quite make it, you know. But um, he was he's a very exceptional human being. Marvin, he had such a great life, so many great roles, so many awards, and, and just a wonderful life. But you had mentioned it there a little bit. His daughter said he wasn't having the best financial situation. The last years of uh, Mickey Rooney's life, the news we heard was he was still married to his last wife, but he hadn't seen her in a while. There were elder abuse charges. He testified in Washington. He was in, he was in financially bad straits. Um, did you see that take a toll on him when you would see him at these events? He never mentioned his personal situation to me, um, but his daughter did, and uh, they showed pictures of him being beaten up, mm. and, and it was terrible what happened. You know, you know what he really died of: lack of use. He was still, he could still, yeah, I'm sure he could still perform. Uh, I saw him do Sugar Babies many years ago with Ann Miller, and he was magnificent. I saw him on stage, and um, the funny thing happened to the way, uh, on the way to the forum, and he didn't trust the material, and he wasn't as good in that as he should have been. Um, he was a fantastic performer. He and Judy Garland. I mean, I saw Judy Garland at the Hollywood Bowl, and it was pouring rain, and, and nobody even noticed until the intermission. There were those kind of performers. And he was a he was a portable baby. He did five a day when he was growing up, so that gave him stamina and experience with audiences. He, I don't know if he ever studied with anybody. He didn't have to. He knew instinctively where to move, how to how to react. Uh, how to attack a part. Look at the people he worked with, Mike, and I'm sure he stole from all of them, from Spencer Tracy and, and um, Wallace Beery and, and, and Frank Morgan, who's one of my favorite actors. They were brilliant, brilliant people under contract at the MGM. And he started when he was like 10 years old or maybe less. He came on like gangbusters. He was always like that. That being said, Marvin, it's so many things uh, encompassed his talent, but what would you say made him great? A lot of people have talent, but Mickey Rooney is in the pantheon. Everybody knows his name. Well, unfortunately, not everybody. I'm on this awful thing called Facebook, <laughs> and someone wrote in when they said the mention Mickey Rooney, they wrote, Mickey who? Oh. And, I, and I was so angry about that. I wrote back in Facebook, I said, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, certainly of his time, he was very well known. Well, what do you think gave him that sort of popularity? He was like, he never grew up. I saw him yesterday, last night, in a Rod Sterling thing 
um, on Twilight Zone. It was called The Last Night of a Jockey. There was only one person in the cast, Mickey Rooney, and he played two parts, and they were totally different people. He played a, a, a jockey who was on, who was very neurotic and then and, and crazy and, and, and uh, at the end of his rope. And he played his conscience, who was an Ivy League type. His body language was com total, completely different in both parts. That, that not many actors can pull that off to be on um, film for over a half hour and uh, just talk to yourself. I mean, and be brilliant. Who can do that? I can't think of anybody, including some of the British actors. Uh, he, he was a brilliant performer. He, you don't get people like that very often. Uh, there are, I, it was a different kind of training, audible, who made you do five performances a day. And his father was a great water victim, and he really lived with that. And, and when you do that kind of work, you instinctively know what to do as a performer. Um, what made him so wonderful is that he was he never grew up. Marvin, I'm looking at a picture right now of you and Mickey Rooney and Jonathan Winters. Mickey Rooney gone, Jonathan Winters gone in the last year, Sid Caesar. And, and, I, I, and I feel it so great. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell us that, Marvin. We don't want to hear that. Uh, All right. How how does that uh, does it give you pause that just you were with these guys so recently and now they're all gone? Yeah, mortality. Yeah, you, know, you, you know what how Hans Conrad would say about this? The original cast is getting smaller. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, Mar Marvin, I, I hate to, to uh, dwell on this, but as I said earlier on, it's common knowledge. He, he was abused. Horrible situation late in his life. He, I read today that his last wife, Jan, who he did tour with, said she learned of his passing from the, ta from the tabloid websites. He had a thing with his stepson, a lawsuit. Uh, he wasn't working at the end for reasons like that. He, he was a, This great performer, did he, do you think he had a happy ending? You have to ask him. When you saw him at Sid Caesar's funeral, do you think he well, was? Well, I tell you, what, there were pictures of us at, 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 at um, the last gig we did. They had wax dummies for some of the other people. It was hard to tell the wax dummies from the human beings. <laughs> would you would you say he was happy though, Marvin? No. Do you? I would say because he wasn't doing what he loved the most, which was his work. I mean, let his work talk for him, not his personal life. We all have rotten personal lives, most of us anyway. And and uh, it's not it's not the public's business, you know, whether we wear pajamas or not. Or it's really, I mean, it's gotten so there's no secrets from anybody getting bored. Uh, that they tap your. Uh, Computers, I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, let his work talk for him. He did a mountain of work. And, you know, I had a producer once who thought that all actors, especially comics, were like pinch hitters. Well, if Mickey was a pinch hitter, and he was, his batting average on the whole of his entire career was extremely high. He had a few rotten, you know, movies, but most of them were damn good, and he was always excellent in them. Be um, Benedict, I asked her once to go to New York, which was a great actress, and she's being taken for granted as just another radio person, and I've seen it. And she, she said, Marvin, I'm a bread and butter actress. I take whatever they give me, and I try to make it better. That's what he did. And he was successful a great deal of the time. How is the public going to remember him? So many films, such a I don't think the public remembers anybody. I, I think... I, I, the public world doesn't really remember Greta Garbo or Paul Muni or all of us. 
wonderful actors. That's why Turner Classics does such a wonderful job. You see some the, the young people get to see the older people's work, and they realize how wonderful it was and how rotten most of it is now. How will you remember him, Marvin? I re remember him as a person who was very d difficult to get next to, a man who was totally unpredictable in his behavior, a man who loved, loved, loved the limelight, and a man who didn't share stage too gracefully, but he was a nice guy and a good guy and one hell of an artist. Uh, he was a natural. There aren't too many naturals. There are a lot of imitations and, and phonies and people who study everything and their performances look studied. But Mickey Rooney was a natural piece of lightning on the screen and on the stage. And uh, that's how I remember him. It was a great, great performer. Man Anderson is basically a very nice guy who, who, and a trooper, who so would work in, he had great pain, physical pain, and he'd go out there and you wouldn't know it. You know, he was a, he was an amazing talent, and he had an amazing metabolism, very fast, great, great energy. Um, you couldn't keep up with him. And, 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 uh, he was a, he, I don't know about the word genius, but he was certainly a master of his craft. That's Marvin, how I remember it. Marvin, before I part uh, here, and, and I just want to separate this from the Mickey Rooney tribute, just to the way you had talked there that people aren't remembered, great actors aren't remembered, it's hard to get work. Are you, I, I don't want to use the word, but are you bitter with the business right now? Yes. Do you work because, on it? Because they, they boycott older people's work. I made a film a couple of years ago. The average age of the cast was 70 plus. I got nine festivals, uh, what in nine festivals? Um, they have the showings whenever they have these festivals. But young people's work was shown. The place was packed. My film, I got nine people to come to the audience. They deliberately boycott older people. Look how it's almost impossible to get to certain places because they're physically inaccessible for older and disabled people. If, if, if uh, Obama wants to do something, let him make all these places physically accessible. The roads are terrible. Um, you, you, you can't wheel a cobble, uh, a, a wheelchair across certain roads. There are no, not enough ramps for wheelchairs. Uh, there's a distinct prejudice against older people in our society. So of course I'm bitter and I'm trying to do something about it. And I, I keep, the thing is, if the head works, you're in good shape. And that's the only part of me that really works well. It's my brain. And, and I'm still able to create and I'm still able to, to, to see friends, tell them, call them up and tell them a joke and so on. Uh, very few, they're not nice to older people. Our society is not kind or accommodating to older, the needs of older people. It turns even bathrooms, you know, do we know who uses the disabled bathrooms? Able-bodied people, uh, which, is, which, and so on. It should be illegal in the same way that using a, a disabled parking uh, space is illegal and find quite a bit of money. They should do the same thing with bathrooms. I mean, they were not designed for able-bodied people. They were, and therefore, the older people who are disabled and can't use regular facilities are, are uh, out of luck. <laughs> Marvin, I, I have to say it's a pleasure to talk with you because I have enjoyed your career over the years. And when you want to talk about something or want to do something, I hope you come back to this program because I'd love to have you back on and talk about your career. And maybe you can come back and tell us a joke from time to time. 
Okay. I, I, I'm working on a musical now about Bluebeard's eighth wife. I love musicals. I love writing lyrics. I'm not so great at writing a book, uh, but uh, that's drudgery to me. But my brain is still going, you know. And a friend of mine asked me to write some lyrics for her musical, which is about Salvatore Dali. And I love doing things like that. And that's how you keep busy. And that's how you keep your brain functioning. Keep your brain functioning. That's the one thing they can't censor. And, and, and uh, uh, that's the, the best part of life after a while. Well, as I say, it's a pleasure to talk with you, Marvin, and I hope you do come back with us as often as you like. You bet you, Scott. Nice talking to you. Bad time to do it, but it's good talking anyway. Absolutely. Marvin Kaplan on the passing of legendary movie icon Mickey Rooney. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you. Right.